There are several issues with correlation analysis that you must be aware of. First of all, we must remember that correlation does not imply causation. For example, if we have two variables, how do we know that correlation between x and y means that x is causing y instead of the potential fact that y might be causing x? So for example, if y is house price and x is income in the neighborhood, how do we know if uh, income levels in the neighborhood are actually causing the price statistic, so high incomes are causing higher prices, or is it the other way around? Neighborhoods with higher prices seem to attract people with higher incomes. And therefore, it would actually be the fact that the, the case would be that housing price is affecting income. In either case, correlation uh, really doesn't imply causation. The only time you can use correlation to suggest that causation is in play is if you have already some well-grounded theory about the direction of the relationship whether or not x is causing y or y is causing x. If we have some existing theory and then we find that there's some correlation, well, we can use that correlation to corroborate our existing theory, to confirm the theory. It doesn't really prove that it's right, but at least it's telling the same story or it's corroborating the evidence. Another problem with correlation is that the association between two variables might be spurious. Imagine we have a variable x, which is, say, the number of churches in a town. And we have a variable y, oh, that should be equals, a variable y, which is the number of bars in a town. If I gave you these two variables and asked you to compute a correlation, I bet you would find some kind of correlation at, like, 0 0.8, a really strong positive correlation. Does that mean that churches, the presence of churches is causing the presence of bars? Does it mean that the presence of bars is causing the presence of churches? Both cases are actually incorrect. This is a case that we call spurious correlation, where the increase in churches and the increase in bars is simultaneously being caused by some third factor. In this case, that third factor, z, is actually the population of a city. So it's just the fact that larger population cities are simultaneously causing there to be more churches in the city, and at the same time it's causing there to be more bars in the city. So when we conduct a correlation analysis, we have to think about our variables and think about whether or not there's actually a relationship between x and y or if that relationship is spuriously being caused by some outside factor. We also might have the case where correlation is being caused by chance alone. For example, I might measure uh, the number of people who chew gum in each neighborhood and the number of people who are blonde haired in each neighborhood. There's some random chance that I conduct the correlation between those two variables and I find that there's some positive or negative relationship there. There's no real, you know, that could always just happen by random chance. But it doesn't necessarily mean that there's evidence of these two processes being related. The behaviors that cause people to choose gum are definitely not related to the biological processes that cause people to have blonde hair. But we might find some correlation anyways if we collected data on those two variables and just randomly tried to compute a correlation statistic.